Good morning you guys and welcome back to Working Aussie's Homestead. We're running some errands this morning because we have a ton of stuff for you today. We're going to be updating you on that goat that we had in the second to last video that we were struggling with. It's also move day and we're going to be spending the evening in the garden talking about what we're planting and how we plan on ending this season to the fullest and uh, what the plans might be for next year. So stay tuned and let's get started. Somehow more than what I had to start Yeah, I've got spare parts Now we're getting started and ready to move everybody and I wanted to just go over again what we do here on our 1.24 acres we do not use all of our land but the land that we do use we do rotational grazing and this can be beneficial for a lot of reasons but you also don't need a lot of animals in order to maintain a small acreage like what we have here if you guys have been with us for a while you know there was no tall grass back in this area when we bought our house two years ago in fact a couple days it'll be exactly two years ago that we bought our property here when we bought our property the grass did not grow and so the number one thing we did was send in a soil sample after that we learned that we needed to either add in some additional amendments or you know we thought about what could we add naturally that's going to make our soil better make our grass actually grow and that was nitrogen and what is the number one animal that puts nitrogen back in the soil chickens the first thing we rotated on this property back here was actually our meat chickens since then we've rotated our meat chickens our cooney coonies and our mini lawancha dairy goats but all of those animals have allowed this to grow back, have a bigger biodiversity in terms of the plants that are growing, and then our soil is healthier. It actually grows nice green grass that now is waist high and is perfect for rotational grazing. So we wanted to really focus more on that and we've tried to be better with that since the drought we had earlier this year. We had a few months where we had no rain uh, but since then we've gotten enough rain to grow everything back but we've been really diligent about rotating our animals every three days so we have the pigs and the goats together and then we have the chickens and the pigs and the goats are moved and then the chickens are moved into the paddock that the goats and the pigs were in um, and what this does is the chickens actually help break down the pig and goat manure even further and also pick up all of the scraps that was left behind. So this spot back here was nice and tall, seriously, like almost as tall as us and we are five, six and five, seven. And now it's back down to dirt. You can actually see the dirt in here again. Um, but this spot here will actually get at least 90 days of rest before we bring the animals back over to this section. And that is plenty of time for the manure to go ahead and break down back here. Um, seriously, this looked so different um, almost a month ago. And it's crazy that in that short period of time that's what we've been able to do on our property but that is really the goal here is to create paddocks and create pasture versus a lawn when we moved here it was only one type of grass growing and now things are popping up we've never even seen before it's exciting to have that be a part of our plan here 
but at the same time being raised in the city you wanted that perfect manicured lawn and here growing pasture that's not what we want and it's hard to remember that sometimes when we drive by our own house and there's a bunch of random weeds in the front and we're like oh those don't look good but we have to remember we're not growing a lawn we're growing pasture and the biodiversity and the diversity of the plants in our pasture is very important and crucial to really the nutrients and the benefits that we want our animals to get when we rotate them across this pasture. Again, the front looks very different compared to back over by the barn as well as different from the far side of our property. But today we are moving the goats and the chickens the goats are moving to this next paddock here over by our second apple tree. Um, and then the chickens are moving to where the goats were. why we are dressed for hot weather it's like probably close to 90 percent humidity yeah and it's at least 90 degrees so we have both had full showers with our own sweat yeah so you guys ready to move are you ready want some fresh grass <laughs> So the chickens have decided that they are going to lay in the field under the coop um, instead of in the coop. Not quite sure why, but they seem to like it better. So we just kind of wait until we move. Um, and then when we move the coop, we make sure we don't run over any. And then we get them all. How many did you get? I didn't count, honestly. <laughs> quite a few. That's what, three days? It's you like look wet there. <laughs> it is so humid out today. Oh man. That's one of those things where you just have to just go with it and it's definitely a great reminder of like the animals take priority yeah. over a lot of things here. And would I opt to stay outside for as long as I typically do every day and sweat my butt off? Probably not. But we're growing and raising our own food, so yeah. it's worth it. But I think it's a water break time. It is a water break. Okay. I wanted to come on here to update you guys a little bit about our goats. And the last video we posted about the goats, we asked for some advice because Lulu, dropped in milk production considerably. She went from giving us a quart a day to maybe a pint. A lot of you suggested that we reach out to Jess from Roots and Refuge. So we did. And Jess recommended we just keep going. Um, she said that her goats don't really max out until three to six months of milking anyways and we are about three months in. So she said, just keep at it, keep working on it. We also reached out to a friend. She actually got Lulu's son 
uh, the little duckling that we had born here back in May. She raises her goats and sheep, all of her animals, 100% holistically. That is something that we are very passionate about, that we want to work towards. And so we reached out to her for a couple ideas on what we can do to really help Lulu because she has lost some weight, her milk production is down, um, and even though we have tried to up her feed, she just will stop eating when she's done. Claire is just a huge wealth of knowledge and so it was great to talk to her about this and also just kind of pick her brain a little bit about holistically raising goats and what we can do differently versus what is more well known in the goat world of what to do for what. One of the things that she suggested is we completely take her off of grain. Now we feed a supplemental grain that we get for milk production. Um, but she suggested we completely wean her off of that, put her on a cup of alfalfa pellets, a quarter cup of black oil sunflower seeds, and a half teaspoon of flax seed at each milking. We are trying that for the first time today. I hope it goes well and I hope it helps. Another thing she said is goats are very emotional. And I know that we don't necessarily think about that, but she knows her little boy is no longer here. So she also gave me a list of different herbs that I could maybe make into a tea for Lulu to really help her with her grieving um, that she's obviously doing. Are you okay? Are you being picky now? There's nothing wrong with the flavor of her milk. It's still nice and sweet. There's no interesting flavor to it, which are all good signs for goats. We will just keep at it. We'll try her on that. Um, once we get her a little more situated with switch over, that's when we will add in some extra supplements. Um, so I'm excited to kind of have you guys follow along with our journey with that. Again, this is her first milking while she's being given alfalfa pellets, black oil, sunflower seeds, and flax. She's a little hesitant to eat, but She's kind of weird about eating on the milking stanchion anyways. I just thought I'd give you guys that update on her, um, and that's what we're gonna try. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is try and figure out some different herbs that I can grow for our goats uh, for next year and have an herb garden just for them to help with a lot of things because we do want to raise our goats and animals, all of them, holistically. Um, and without the use of antibiotics, without the use of dewormer. Um, so that is our goal here, is to be as absolute natural as possible. She still has a nice healthy appetite. Her eyelids are bright pink. Um, her poops are solid. So all, all good things when it comes to any animal. Solid poops and a healthy appetite. Not a girlfriend. All right guys, it's time to go back outside. It was obnoxiously hot. So like for us in this part of North Carolina, if you are working outside and it's like the time between four and six o'clock, it is obnoxiously hot and you still have to go inside at that time or else you're just gonna overheat and it's gonna be, woo, it's gonna be way too hot. But it's evening time. We've got some shade cover. I think we're gonna have a little bit of rain coming our way. But we're in the garden now, and I wanna show you kind of where we're at with this and what we plan on planting for the fall, and then we're gonna start building some of these beds. Um, if I could get this gate to close. We've done a little bit of work so far, and we've actually kept most of these plants in here. These are either winter squash, uh, watermelons, there's some cantaloupes at the end. I've lost that one, and these are butternut squash. But the way I have all these planted in here is I'm planning on them going this way, up against the fence, um, to keep them off of the rest of the plants in here, because what we have going on in this bed here is I have broccoli and I have beets. Um, all of this is either a Waltham 29 broccoli or a touchstone gold beet or a um, 
Detroit Red. I've also decided to use an F1 Hybrid for my broccoli. And I'm going with um, Johnny's Seeds Imperial Broccoli. And I haven't had good luck with my heirloom broccoli so far, so we're gonna try this F1 Hybrid as well. This row here, this has cauliflower at the end and purple broccoli um, at the far end closest to the house and I've had good luck with the purple broccoli before so I'm hoping that we'll get some stuff out of it now according to my book for companion planting broccoli usually likes beets or it's good with onions or uh, celery I have gotten halfway down this row so far where all of those little sticks are, that is where I need to plant the rest of my onions and celery. But I actually think I'm going to work on this row over here, um, and maybe the one on this side tonight. I'm just trying to get the rows set up and then coming out in the morning before I go to work and actually planting some more plants um, before it gets too hot. And then having them water or soak overnight. So we're going to knock out these two beds and then that way tomorrow I can hopefully come out here and plant some more, but I'm gonna show you what I plan on planting in these two rows. I'm losing daylight, so. I promised you I'd show you these peanuts because I'm uber excited about it. And here they are. One, two, three, four, five. There's a tiny one right there. One, and there's one, and there's one. But you can see there's a couple back here. But there's a couple right here. There's one over there. There's one over there. These are looking really good. And you can see the little flowers coming in. This is where the peanuts will come. So what happens is they bring out the flowers and then they die back and then they fall over and evidently the peanuts grow underground. It's a really fascinating process. I haven't like watched a time lapse of it or anything if anybody has anything. Um, but that's a really cool process. So I'm excited for the peanuts. I'm excited that they're getting blooms. Um, and I'm just excited to have something different from the garden this year. We had our tomatoes and corn and squash and all our normal stuff. But I'm excited to get something different from the garden this year. But, beautiful sunsets happening. But I am running out of time. So, until the next time you guys, thank you for joining us today. Um, thank you for spending some time with us and getting caught up with us. And... Um, We'll keep working on this fall garden and keep you in the loop on how everything is going and do some more of these garden tours because it seems like you guys really like the garden tours so we'll do some more of those but until next time guys see you in the next one bye guys